Hi, I'm Dale LePage. And I'm Tina Marie Billing. Welcome, Welcome to, to New, New England, England Pride, Pride TV. TV. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Stand up, shout out, show us. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Mm -hmm. New England pride. Hey kids, welcome back to more New England Pride TV. I'm your host, Dale LePage. I'm here right now with... Jamie Matheny. Jamie and I go way back, I, oh, at least 10 years. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, at least 10 years. <laughs> um, I don't remember how we met, but I'm glad we did. Yep. And we're here to tell our viewers um, all about First Event. Correct? Yes. All right, yes. Let's, let's start from the beginning. What is First Event? First Event is a um, conference uh, for transgender and gender nonconforming folks. Um, it started out as a very small conference, probably 30, 40 people. How many um, years ago was that? That was about 38. I think this was first event 38. So from those humble beginnings, we've grown mm -hmm. to over a thousand people. Yes. And somewhere around 300 classes. Um, we have uh, some incredible vendors. Um, we have some incredible sponsors. Uh, Tufts Healthcare, uh -huh. um, and I'm yeah. blanking on that's, the rest of them. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay because the, it, we, we, I know without our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Exactly. So let's break this down. Mm -hmm. First event, um, this is the first year in probably a long time that I w wasn't able to attend. Yes. Um, I, th if, I think it was held in Marble, correct? Yes, correct. Um, which is, I, I love that. Do you like that venue? It's really good. I, we're, we're outgrowing You're it. outgrowing that too? Yes. No. Oh my God. Because so, I, I think the first time I went, um, I don't know if it was in Boston or Framingham mm -hmm. or Natick or someplace like that, and you outgrew that space. Mm -hmm. So now you're even outgrowing. Yep. This is our third hotel in under a decade. Yep. And we just keep growing. And that's, I think that's what we're trying to do as a, uh, not only as a club, but as a, an organization, we're trying to grow and become more inclusive, um, embrace the entire gender spectrum. Uh, we've got attendees all the way from seven years old to right. 75. Right, and, and more. they come from all over, all over the country. The country. And some or the we, world. We do have some international. Yeah, uh, that's where that's where I was getting at, <laughs> because. Um, in the years prior where I've attended, first of all, let me just say, like, as soon as you walk in, the, it, it is nothing but one big bucket of love. It, everybody mm -hmm. is there to support each other, yep. and just, it's, it's incredible. The feeling is incredible. Exactly. Um, the first time I was there, I was introduced to First Night through uh, Grace Stevens. Yes. Who ended up being one of New England Pride TV's Person of the Year, I think, mm -hmm. I think maybe 2016, maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was instrumental in, uh, she did so much work on oh, yes. First Event. And uh, then I got to know Michelle Hirsch. Yes. Yes. Who is absolutely amazing. Yep. She runs a tight ship on the fashion show. And is that what she's mainly in charge of, the fashion show? Yeah, that's one okay. of her big, that's, yep. that's her baby. Yeah. Um, and we get to, you know, a chance to celebrate uh, the trans experience and the trans beauty. So yeah. it's fantastic. Now, speaking of... Um, we're, let's well, let's just get back for a second. Like, who is in charge? Who is in charge of the? Who's on, who's like the leading the helm? Well, that's uh, that's a great question. This year, um, we're trying to actually build a full fleshed out organization. Yeah. Um, and instead of one person having to bear the load of this entire event, and this event is which, massive, which is uh, which is a lot. Yes. But we we actually had a great team this year. Um, I'm not going to use last names because some okay. of these women aren't. Right. You know, nope. all the time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we had Cheryl, Bree, Shelley, um, and we had Anderson, who led our um, uh, transmasculine program. Oh, nice. And everyone did, you know, this is really a team effort. The many hands makes light work. And it's, it makes for a wonderful thing. Um, it's a safe place. Um, I always compare it to 
a, uh, an enclosed three-day pride parade. That's pretty much <laughs> like that is the feeling you get. Um, when you, when, for, for, for me, when I walked in, I can only speak for myself, when I walked in, <laughs> incredibly um, informative. Yes. The class, Nick, can you tell us some of the classes that go yes. on there? Um, we have, we had classes all the way ranging from um, recovering from addiction while trans to um, what to expect for surgery, how mm, to change your ID. Yeah. Um, you got to meet a bunch of the doctors and talking about different processes. Um, it's pretty much anything that you could think of in the, you know, gender spectrum was represented there in some form or another. Because when I was walking through the vendors, I was like, uh, there was um, master makeup artists. Yes. There, there were um, uh, clothing. Mm -hmm. There, there were uh, cosmetic surgery. Yes. Um, the surgeons themselves were there. Oh yes. Not just like handing out pamphlets. They were like, they were like letting you know that they're. Mm -hmm. They they have what you need, and this is how you this is how you can attain what you're looking exactly. for. And uh, do they do they have um, cosmetic surgery seminars there too? Oh, they have all they have the entire range of cosmetics uh, seminars, um, all the way from facial feminization mm -hmm. to um, uh, GRS gender reconstruction yep, surgery, yep. Um, and everything in between. I have just a, l a little side question. Um, sure. Um, I have a lot of transgender friends. Mm -hmm. a lot. It's, it's one big <laughs> family. Um, um, where is the m most popular place to get gender reassignment surgery, do you think? Because yeah. oh, there's a place that keeps coming up, and mm -hmm. I want to know if you think that. There's a, there's a bunch right now, but um, right now I've got to give shouts out to um, Boston Medical Center. The program that they started up um, is really becoming very popular, and I've heard a lot of good That's things from them. Great to know. So, because a lot of my friends have traveled to um, like uh, out west. Um Yes, and, and um, that's where they've been mm -hmm. mainly going. But it's nice to know that this Boston is really kind of like exactly. taking the lead and it's taking charge in this. That's wonderful. So there are seminars. Yes, uh, the fashion show, which is of course is the fashion show like the highlight of the weekend kind of thing. No, the the fashion show is actually the kickoff to the weekend. Kickoff to the weekend. Because um, when when I was there, um, I mean it's it is so crowded and so well attended. Mm -hmm. You're like you can't even move. It's amazing. Yes, yeah. it was wonderful. Um, it's a it's a way to say that you know. We're here, we're beautiful, and we're here to have a good time. Yes. So, yes. Um, my, of course, we all love the, you know, true beauty queens, the professionals, but the ones that really get me are the kids. Um, one little girl who came up to me a couple of years ago, just as she'd begun her transition at five, and was so shy and so scared, she was in the fashion show this year with her beautiful blonde hair, and I'm like, oh my God, I love you because it gives, it gives me hope. Yeah. You know, it tells me that, you know, I'm doing all this work for a reason. People, people are appreciating what you're doing. So, all, you. the hard, all the hard work. It's a lot of hard work. It is. And like I said, it's all a team effort. Right. Um, you know, the, the incredible folks that we have with us for this event, we couldn't do it without them. All right, we've got to um, just recap really quickly because we're out of time. Of, um, <laughs> so if people would like to find out about First Event, yep. where can they go for that? You can find out about First Event at uh, firstevent.org mm -hmm. or um, the website for uh, the Transgender Club of New England, yep. which sponsors uh, First Event, right. is tcne.org. That's right, tcne. And Facebook? Facebook, yes, we are on Facebook. Both groups are on Facebook. All right. So we look forward to meeting everybody. It's a wonderful event. You guys are doing incredible things. And uh, I'm going to go next year. I'm going to be able to go next year. You are. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more New England Pride TV right after this. New England Pride TV is presented by Fallon Health and sponsored by the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts, Remax Vision, Bay State Savings Bank, Safe Homes, The Pavilion at the Beer Garden, Paul Chase and Interior Design, Nuovo Restaurant, Dr. Frank P. Fetchner Plastic Surgery, The Queen's Cups, Healing Point Therapeutics, Art Reach, Electric Haze, Bull Mansion, Ellie's Pet Barn, Hand Me Taekwondo Center, and Heard Strategy and Storytelling.
Hello and welcome back to New England Pride TV. I'm your host, Dale Page. Right now, I am with one of my favorite people in the whole entire world, my work wife, Andrea Castanetti. Welcome, Hubby. baby. Thanks. This is the first time you've ever been on the show. Ever. I'm very excited. For those of you who don't know, uh, we co-host a radio show uh, that is on 102.9 Unity Radio every Monday from 1 to 2.30. It was 1 to 2, but our show was so freaking popular, <laughs> they gave us another... Another 30 minutes. That's right. It's all because of her, because she has a huge fan base. He's lying, but it's all because of Dale. No, it's, 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 it's so much it's fun. It's us. It's a team effort. It's so much fun. It is. And uh, the show is actually called the Good News Radio Show, and we, we promote, tell, tell everybody what we promote. Local businesses, local nonprofits, people that really make a difference that deserve to right. be recognized in the community. Inspiring people. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to have a comedian on uh, one of these days. I'm day very yeah. excited for that. Um, and we have a, a, a really good following, and I want to thank you for um, listening to us. Right. On WorcesterMag.com, 102.9. And Facebook Live. Yep. But we never get any phone calls. No, we need to We need to have some type of incentive. Incentive, right. Not sure what that Just would call be. call in and you could talk to Andrea. That should be right. incentive I mean Right. I mean, the, the phone lines would be like off the hook for that. <laughs> off the charts. Right. <laughs> uh, so our, uh, the reason I wanted uh, Andrea on the show today is because she has done something very inspiring. And, uh, well, every day you do something inspiring. I, I know all the good deeds you do. You make me look like a piece of crap, but thank you anyway. <laughs> um, no, uh, Andrea has created a wonderful organization called the Kindness Coalition. Now, how did that come about? So, well, thank you, by the way, for having me here. I You're welcome. It. So, I, should, yes. I should have been wearing my T-shirt, right? I know. Me too. Right. Sorry, we're not obviously very good role models. No. But <laughs> Kindness Coalition of Massachusetts came in effect about three months ago. Okay. Um, you know, I do obviously a lot of charity a work. A lot of charity. I've never met anyone who does as much <laughs> charity work as you. Yeah. You know, it, it's in my blood. It's what I'm all about. And it's one yeah. of, obviously, my passions. So, a great lady, Marianne Wessel, came, you know, came out and she said she runs Charity Checkpoint. And she said, I really want to help you become a nonprofit and take this from a smaller scale to a larger scale. So, you know, the, over the years we've evolved and we started getting bigger and bigger and I said, you know what, you're right, it's time that we become a nonprofit. You know, it's a lot of work to become a nonprofit. So luckily she held my hand the whole way. Oh, that helps um, a lot. You know, and I have a humongous following of awesome people that really want to help. Yes, you do. So, you know, we started with the backpack drives. Um, I went to the, I think the first back, to, back try yeah. was uh, in Boyson of the Church. It was- In the, January. It, it, the, there, it was standing room only. <laughs> The mayor was there, the governor, um, you know, it was incredible. It was insane. It was <laughs> emotional. It was. So the, how that came about was, you know, I've always done clothing for the homeless and things right. like that. And I remember seeing, I can still see this guy's face. He was standing on uh, Route 9, middle of winter. I mean, you remember how cold this winter yeah. was, freezing. Yeah. And this guy was in a t-shirt, a ratty sweatshirt, had like a bunch of things in a stop and shop bag. And I just said like, there has to be something yeah. we can do. And I know some of this stuff is a Band-Aid. Obviously, we want to end homelessness, but that's not going to happen overnight. So I put out on Facebook, I said, who wants to help me fill 25 backpacks for the homeless? And all of a sudden, all these people are, mm -hmm. I want help, I want help, what mm -hmm. can I do? So in two weeks, I got um, the church donated in West Boylston yep. um, from my friend Heidi. She said, you know, use the church, gather everybody there. And I want to just stress, it is a huge venue. It was a big, big room. Yeah. Right. So I walked in. I was like, oh, my God, this is OK. Yeah. So, you know, all of a sudden, three hours early, people start coming in. Three hours early? Three hours early. And I'm like, oh, all right, the event's not for three hours, but, you know, come on in and help. And I had probably 200 volunteers. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, within with two hours to go, the entire venue was filled yes. with, I, I can't even, I mean, there were thousands upon thousands of donations, as you saw. Yeah. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, all the people started coming in, yep. and all of a sudden, I was standing on the stage, and I look up, and I'm like... It's a sea of heads. Right. Yep. You know, and I thought 25 backpacks was like being aggressive. I'm like, there's no way we're going to fill 25 backpacks. Yep. You know, and we ended up filling like 250 backpacks or something oh, like that. Oh, yep. my God. And then we and filled... And as yeah. amazing as that story is, I want to jump ahead a few months later. Yep. <laughs> in in the, the next event that I went to, I volunteered, and you gave me that great T-shirt, which I loved. Yep. Um, it was in a space that was five times the size <laughs> right. of the first one. Yep. And you filled how many backpacks for foster children? I want to say they were f a little over 500. Yes. Over 500 backpacks right. were filled yeah. with everything a child could need. Imaginable. Yes. Right. Um, one, one of the things that touched me is you told a story. Um, well, you touch me all the time. Yeah. But this time with a story. <laughs> in a different way. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
about um, towel. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, every day I hear sad stories. Right. And for some reason, this story is something I'll never forget, too. So a woman reached out and she said, I think what you're doing is amazing. I want to tell you a story about my daughter that I adopted. Mm -hmm. And the little girl was like five years old. She was pulled out of her home. And again, she was pulled out of an abusive home, but that's the only home she's ever known. Right. So, you know, she's traumatized. So the foster parents said, go take a shower. So the little girl goes into the bathroom in a home that she knows nothing about. Never been there before. And she couldn't even find a towel. Right. So, you know, when every time I hear that, you know, the little girl always will retell that story. She's like 18 now. Yeah. And she said, you know, I was standing in this bathroom, five years old. I had nothing to towel off on, you know, dry off on. And, um, you know, I didn't know what to do. And th that made her feel, she you know. She had nothing that was hers. Nothing at all. So that's why we decided to really, you know, we put the necessities in these backpacks, mm -hmm. but we also put personal things. And, you know, we have those card decorating tables with Darcy Schwartz. Yes, Darcy, uh, Darcy Schwartz. Uh, is awesome. I, I think Schwartz. Schwartz. She is one of the most amazing human beings. I'm extremely amazing. lucky to have known her. Yep. I, I met her through you, I think. Or did I, you call, call I think we radio? met together. Darcy Schwartz is actually Artreach, and she is a sponsor of this show now. Yep, and which she's is incredible. an amazing human being. Um, she uh, and her team of, of kids yep. put special cards in right. these, I, all these backpacks. Yeah, I wanted to have something for the homeless too. You know, just something that can make them feel human, especially yeah. for the homeless. Yeah. And then these little kids, so all the kids that come to the events make personalized notes and cards to put in all the backpacks. Right. So we just kind of give it like, you know, a more personal touch and, you know, it gives the little kids that are at the event you know, yeah, there were lots of kids. Yeah, they were awesome. Uh, kids are kids are uh, kids are always welcome always at my welcome events, at these and that's events. what makes right. us a little bit right. different than you know the regular right. events. So right, yeah. Um, now, uh, what's next for the Kindness Coalition? Yep. So I now, know you have. Uh, yeah, we have a lineup. A, th a three, a th three or four. Three or four. Yeah. yeah. So right now there's four, but um, for back to school. Okay. We are doing not a backpack drive, but we're doing a fill the shelves. Is this for teachers? For teachers. Isn't yep. that sad that we have to do that? Awful. So I know tons of teachers in Worcester Public Schools yep. and you know surrounding towns yep. that are constantly taking money out of their pockets. Of their own pockets. Of their own money. Now, A, teachers don't make enough money. I just yelled, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I'm passionate about it too. <laughs> teachers don't make enough money. Right. B, they have to take money out of their own pocket yep. in order to you know give these kids what they need. Yep. And I've found so many kids start school not even with like a pencil box. Right. Because their parents can't afford it. They can't, now, I, I just want to, um, I try not to get political on the show, but I will tell you that the current administration has now, uh, does not allow teachers to uh, declare supplies they buy for their classrooms. Uh, yeah. There's, I could go on and on. About right? It. Yeah. There's a lot of craziness. That is the world we live in. Teachers as is don't get paid enough. Right. I mean, we walk into Emma's school right. and I'm like, oh, how do these teachers do this every right. day? All right, I'm so, sorry, I got yeah. back to So uh, fill the shelves. Fill the shelves. We're going to collect, yeah. um, you know, obviously, you know, back to school supplies, yep. snacks, because yep. a lot of kids, again, don't have food right. and don't have snacks. Right. Um, and cleaning products and hand sanitizer, things that these teachers need to try to take the load off them and let them yeah. actually focus on teaching. So we've got like a minute left. What's yeah. the other three events? Yep, so we're obviously going to do our two signature backpack drives for homeless, homeless. in the winter, DCF in, in April. Yeah. And then we're going to do an animal related. Event. Oh, good. Yep, oh, this is news determined. to me. I'm excited. Yep, of course, I can't leave out my fur babies. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, so. um, oh, that's actually how we met at a fur baby yep, thing. Yep. Um, uh, <laughs> before we close, um, Please go to Facebook. Can anyone join the Kindness Coalition? Yes, oh, yep. Anybody can join. It's open to the public, the Kindness Coalition. We welcome everybody. Um, and uh, one thing I want to let everyone watching at home and people even here in the studio, um, I reached out to our city mayor, and in September, this <laughs> amazing woman to my right will be getting the key to the city <laughs> for her incredible, generous, charitable work. So I'm that. very excited about that. I am too. That's amazing. That's September 15th. That's going to be at the Bull Mansion. It's the one-year anniversary of our radio show, yep. and it's the the, uh, the my band is playing the Yellow Pages of Manhattan's, and you're getting the freaking key to the city for all so your good work. That's I exciting. I appreciate that. All right, thank you so much. Um, we'll be back with more right after this. New England Pride TV is presented by Fallon Health and sponsored by the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts, Remax Vision, Bay State Savings Bank, Safe Homes. The Pavilion at the Beer Garden. Paul Chase and Interior Design. Nuovo Restaurant. Dr. Frank P. Fetchner Plastic Surgery. The Queen's Cups. Healing Point Therapeutics. Art Reach. Electric Haze. Bull Mansion. 
Kelly's Pet Barn, Hand Me Taekwondo Center, and Herd Strategy and Storytelling. Hey kids, we're back on New England Pride TV. I'm your host, Dale Page, and I'm joined right now by Christian Yapour, who is, I don't, you probably can't read his banner, but it's Mr. Worcester Pride 2018. And I had the absolute pleasure of being one of the judges for the Worcester Pride pageant. Actually, I've been a judge for the past three or four years, and I truly, I truly, truly enjoy it. I hope they have, uh, keep having me come back because I love it. It's such a fun event. It's, um, it's, it's just a big celebration and, and everyone, everyone's just doing the, these amazing talents. That's where, where I'm coming in with, with you. Your talent was incredible. First of all, let's, yeah. let's start out with, um, what made you say like, I'm going to go for this. I'm gonna, I wanna try to be Mr. Worcester Pride. Um, so I, I'm born and raised in Worcester and I wasn't really, I was a within and without sort of person, so I wasn't really part of Worcester's gay scene. Mm -hmm. um, then I started working at the MB Lounge. Oh, you did? I, started, I didn't know that. Yeah. I used oh. to work, um, work under Marco, mm -hmm. um, and I used to just meet people, and then people were just like, oh, you should just do it. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what my talent would be. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, I have no idea what I would do. Yeah. And they were just like, yeah, you should just, just go for it. And I was like, oh, whatever. I just, my, that's my way of kind of doing things. I go with the flow. Okay. And I kind of just stumble into things and just do things. Welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just was like, oh, I'll sign up. I don't know what my talent is. And it was like maybe. So you signed up before you even decided what your talent was going to oh, be. Oh, yeah. OK. I was like right. scrambling. So were I you got, going like, to, what were your choices? Were you going to like sing, juggle, dance? What were you going to do? I had no idea. No. I was like, I was like, what do people, I was asking people, I was like, what did they do in the past? Like, yeah. I was like, should I do something like, I had no idea. I was some like, should I write something? Some people do some like really amazing poetry slam kind of readings, and some people sing, some people dance. Um, what do some other people do? I don't, I don't remember, but I do remember your talent because <laughs> you must have really worked on that for how long? Oh yeah, there was like a team of people coming so up a, with ideas. A team of people <laughs> had to come up with that, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting in the judges section, and you come on stage. And immediately it was like, it started off like high energy and so fun and, and people, the crowd was like just crazy for you. Yeah. And so all the, I, the, glitty, the glitter and the confetti, <laughs> um, whose idea was that? Um, I stole that idea off of my boyfriend. Oh, what? So, so some of it comes from uh, Sasha Velour's performance on RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, okay. So the whole confetti, leaking mm -hmm. confetti everywhere and mm -hmm. glitter, that was, Part of that performance, but Nate and I would just spit ideas off of each other. We were just now. Nate is my boyfriend. Nate's my boyfriend. Hey, <laughs> Hi, Nate. Nate. <laughs> <laughs> so Nate and I would just spit ideas off of each other. We'd be like, oh, okay, oh, what if you did this? Oh, that would be so funny. That would be that would be so extra. That's so you. Yeah. Um, some of them are just like he's like, oh, that's my idea. I want to do that one day. And I'm just like, oh, sorry. Like, oh my God, will he perhaps be entering this year? He should. <gasps> If you're I watching think, it, I know, he, I know he's watching. <laughs> I got a little spark in him, so he should do it. <laughs> oh, my God, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So what was it like backstage? Because there were a lot of contestants. So backstage, it was really cool. I got to meet a lot of really interesting people. Yeah. Um, everybody had, like, their own stories. And although I met them just for, like, the brief, be the, uh, brief space of time mm -hmm. back there before right. the show and um, during the show, I got to like really connect with them, and some of them I'm still really close with, and I still message on the regular. Now let's do a little shout out to all the rest of the other title holders who are uh, Brady Greenwood, mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie, what's Stephanie's last name? Texera. Texera. I might pronounce it okay. incorrectly. Okay, I, I'm, I had you Sorry, say Stephanie. it because I'm always wrong, <laughs> so Stephanie, and... And uh, Poison Henry Envy, Henry Butler. Henry Butler. Yeah, who made uh, like national news reading reading a library book to a, a youth group and it was like scandalous for some people which was ridiculous you better work <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um so one of the things like uh, as you i'm a performer too i you know that you uh, when you're backstage waiting to go on is it something that you're so nervous you don't remember a lot of it oh, is it yeah. ever like that yeah so when i was there this is like my first time performing at all like right. doing any kind oh, of performance my God, yeah. so i was just like pretty nervous yeah um, I saw people have like the really cool outfits and yes. stuff, and I was getting ready for my performance and like getting 
ready for, I guess we had like four different portions. Yes. Uh, so it was the express yourself outfit, the performance or your talent, yeah. and then the evening wear so slash yeah. the uh, answer your question. Yeah. Oh, that answer the question. Um, yeah. That is always so tough, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So, like, after, so, like, getting ready for the performance, I was like, okay, like, got ready for it. After the performance, which was, like, super extra, super flashy, glittery, yep. Yep. Um, I was in a lot of pain after that. What do you mean? The adrenaline just, like, came down. What was in pain? Like, your whole body? Oh, or? my whole body ached. <laughs> from, from the dancing? <laughs> yeah. From the intense dancing? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, I was like, I was like, oh, my God, there's one more thing I have to do. I was yes. like... I was like, it was all I have choreographed. To, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I have to bring it home. Yeah. So like, I like put on my evening wear outfit, and oh, I just like smiled. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, the adrenaline rush was real. <laughs> now, what is it? What is it meant to you to, to be Mister uh, Worcester Pride? Uh, it was, it from someone like me, it means a lot. Um, so I'm an LGBT person of color. Um, I'm Latino, um, and I grew up in a very Christian family. So something like coming out is not, I'm the only real out person in my family. Mm -hmm. um, so something like that just really stood out to me because my father's a pastor. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the preacher's son. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it just like really meant a lot to sort of represent people like me mm -hmm. who've never really been able to talk about their mm -hmm. sort of stories or really been able to express their, who they really were. Um, and now I'm doing it all yeah. tickled pink and everything. You tickled pink. <laughs> uh, but uh, then right right after the Pride pageant, I think you were like marching in the parade. Was it the parade the next day even? Yeah. It was, was the next day. So it must have been like such a whirlwind, right? Oh, yeah. That right. was an exhausting weekend. I'm, I'm I had sure. the pageant, yeah. then the parade, yeah. and then the next day my sister got married. So oh, I had to just my like... God. Be happy. You were, you, were like, you were like this all the way to the wedding. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was exhausted. That was a busy weekend. <laughs> so it's been a great year for you, right? Yeah. I mean, I see you on social media having so much fun. And um, so is there, what, what, are you, what are you personally up to? Are you in school? Are you working? Are you... Um, so I currently work at Unum. They were one of the sponsors of the, uh, the Pride Ooh, pageant. All right. Shout out to Unum. <laughs> Hi, Unum. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so I work with them. And what am I doing now? I am working with the Worcester Youth Pride. Um, now the Worcester Youth Pride, that is, put, they're putting on a youth prom, correct? Mm -hmm. Which I think is wonderful. Yeah. How, I don't know how, I don't even know how that started, but I think it's, I don't even, has it been around for a couple of years or more than that? I or? think it's been around for like just a couple of years. A couple of years? I think yeah. it's brilliant. Where does it take place? So it's going to be on May 11th. Okay. Um, and it's, at, I think right now it's the YWCA here in okay. Worcester. Is that where it was last year also? I'm not sure where it was okay. last year. New England Pride TV is a sponsor of the Worcester Youth Pride. We'll, do it, we'll be doing it again. <laughs> um, so I just, we're running out of time, unfortunately, but I just have to say congratulations. You've been Thank such you. a wonderful representative for the community, always very positive. Thank um, you. <laughs> and and I, there just needs to be more people like you. That's all I have to say. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> uh, so let's just give uh, a little um, shout out to your boyfriend to, to get him to enter this year, right? <laughs> yeah, go for it, Nate. <laughs> go for it, Nate. Yeah, and you'll ha handle the glitter can confetti cannon this year. Yeah, yeah, right, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, New England Pride TV is um, sponsoring the tiaras for the pageant this year, so um, we'll be helping in our own way. All right, <laughs> we will be back with more right after this. We have come to the end of another episode of New England Pride TV. I'd like to thank our guests today for informing us on such great things that are coming up, great organizations. If you are checking out our New England Pride TV Facebook page, I want to thank you for that because we are pretty much at 10,000 likes, which is amazing for us. Yes. And we're going to end the show the way we always do, by saying, please don't be afraid to shine your light. Because you might be lighting the way for someone in need. Until next time. Thank you. You've got, you got New England pride. Show us, you've got New England pride. Stand up, shout out, show us. You got New England pride. Show us, you've got New England pride. Mm -hmm. New England pride.